If I told you that you could do less than two minutes of work each week and see measurable benefits in your heart and metabolic health, would you believe me? Some exciting research around reduced intensity interval training was just published in June of 2024, and it's showing promise for those that don't enjoy high intensity training like HIT or SIT, but still want the benefits. So adding intense cardio like high intensity interval training HIT or sprint interval training or SIT can have major impacts on your health. It can improve VO2 max, which is highly correlated to longevity. It also improves metabolic health by improving insulin sensitivity and mitochondrial density. I did an entire episode on HIT and the benefits. That's episode number 150 called HIT and longevity, if you want to add that to your next listen. But these adaptations that high intensity exercise can provide are important because number one, improved VO2 max improves overall health and longevity. Improved VO2 max is one of the most powerful modifiable predictors for future health and longevity. Number two, it can improve your metabolic health like insulin sensitivity. It improves your ability to resist chronic disease like Alzheimer's and dementia and helps to keep your body composition at a healthy level. And then number three, you'll just feel higher energy and more mentally clear when your body is healthier from a cellular level. Remember that you can get a lot of these adaptations from hypertrophy training and building muscle, but adding this high intensity training can be an additional layer. Now, there are different levels of intensity that will have slightly different benefits. The main forms of exercise that are considered high intensity are HIT, high intensity interval training, and SIT or sprint interval training. HIT is sub max effort, so about 80% of your effort for like one-ish to four-ish minutes. Sit is shorter bursts of supra-maximal effort. So above your 100% for 30-ish seconds with one to two minutes of rest in between. You may see different definitions depending on who you're following, but in general, that's the difference between hit and sit. When it comes to deciding which one is more potent for improving your health, sit takes the cake. This is because the power outputs achieved during all-out sprints, even in untrained individuals, far exceed those during moderate intensity exercise, like typical HIIT sessions, providing a unique and potent stimulus for adaptation. Even one supermaximal sprint effort forces your body to rapidly deplete glycogen stores in the liver and muscle, and this has downstream effects that ultimately improve your metabolic flexibility, your VO2 max, and insulin sensitivity. The beauty is you don't need a lot of these to get the effects, and this is what I want to talk about today. Think of super maximal efforts, your sprint efforts, like flipping on a light switch in your body. Even one sprint can turn that light switch on. When you do these short, intense bursts of exercise, it's like you're suddenly turning on all the, the systems in your body on full power. This brief but powerful workout tells your body that it needs to get healthier and stronger. So it starts making changes that improve things like your fitness, how well you handle sugar, and your overall health. Flipping this switch, even just with one sprint, triggers a cascade of physiological events in the body. So what happens? These brief all-out sprints create a rapid and severe disturbance of homeostasis, including substantial depletion of energy stores, accumulation of metabolites, and dramatic cardiovascular responses, which activate various signaling pathways in skeletal muscle and other tissues. So this acute stress via a sprint serves as a potent stimulus for adaptive, adaptive responses leading to improvements in key health markers like VO2 max, insulin sensitivity, metabolic flexibility, potentially enhancing overall health and longevity with a remarkably small time investment. An interval that is longer, so more like a hit session with less effort, may not evoke the same powerful response, although it will have positive effects. This short kind of all-out effort or sprint will have more powerful effects on metabolic health, and I would recommend prioritizing it over hit workouts or over your just high-intensity workouts and definitely over like a boot camp type workout because many times these boot camp type classes will have intensity laced in or interwoven into the routine, but often due to the longer duration of the overall workout, you aren't able to hit high intensities to trigger that switch because you've already accumulated significant fatigue throughout the workout. So you're not able to get to that super maximal effort because you're not as well rested. Now, don't get me wrong. The benefits 
of boot camp classes, you'll still see, you know, cardiovascular benefits from doing intense workouts, even if you're not hitting those super maximal effort, but you might not be getting as much of a benefit while potentially unnecessarily wearing your body down and spending a lot of time doing it. So although some boot camp workouts may have hit woven in, they may not be achieving the same results as doing kind of sprint interval training separately when you're more recovered. The beauty of sprint interval training is that it's really high bang for your buck. The sessions are short and they have to be short because if they're too long, you won't hit the intensities to trigger that hormonal switch. But if you're like, okay, I hear you. I hear that high intensity is probably good for me, but I hate it. I dread it. I don't want to do it. I have some good news for you because this interesting literature is suggesting you can do very minimal amounts of this and really see substantial benefits. So sprint interval training, sit recommendations are generally, the sessions are like, you know, four to six rounds generally with some time in between each round. But interesting research is emerging that says that this many rounds may not be necessary to kind of get that switch or that hormonal cascade that really provides all of the benefits. Because it doesn't seem to be the amount of rounds that you're doing that's important, but if you're hitting that super maximal intensity at all, even if it's just one or two or three times. So introducing re-hit, reduced exertion, high intensity interval training. And it really should be called re-sit because it's more like a sprint than a, than a high intensity interval training. But re-hit is all out super maximal effort for 20 to 30 seconds with two to three minutes in between, repeated two or three times. According to the paper that I'll link in the show notes, Rehit appears to be equally as effective as higher volume sit trainings, particularly for improving maximal oxygen uptake, that VO2 max, which is such a strong predictor of your overall longevity. The article states there's convincing evidence that rehit, so only two to three, 20 to 30 second sprints, can enhance VO2 max in a variety of populations and to a similar extent as higher volume sit protocols. The authors argue that performing a greater volume of supermaximal exercise in a sit session does not necessarily result in additional training benefits. Why is this? We are so conditioned that believe we are so conditioned to believe that if something's good, that must mean more of it's better. And that isn't necessarily how physiology works. According to the article, the physiological reason why rehit has similar benefits to higher volume sit protocols or hit despite its lower volumes are that number one, even two to three spent sprints cause severe metabolic stress. According to the article, even one sprint causes severe metabolic stress. This disrupts homeostasis, causing your body to respond and react, flipping that switch. For example, One single sprint interval causes intramuscular ATP concentrations to decrease by 50%. You also see rapid decreases in glycogen concentration in the muscles by 20 to 30%, and you see skeletal muscle and blood lactate increase dramatically. Even one sprint done regularly can improve VO2 max because it creates a substantial energy demand. There's a large aerobic component to each sprint, so your muscles are working at their max, which requires a high amount of oxygen uptake. Blood flow to the muscles can increase by about 100-fold just in one sprint. This challenges the cardiovascular system, forcing it to adapt so it's more efficient next time. There's also molecular signaling leading to increased gene expression, and as a result of this increased gene expression, more proteins are produced. These proteins can be structural, so like building new muscle fibers, for example, or functional, like enzymes that improve metabolic processes. The significance of this is that even short, intense bouts of of exercise like rehit can trigger these molecular signaling cascades. These cascades lead to the production of proteins that are crucial for the body's adaptation to exercise, such as improving cardiovascular fitness, muscle function, and metabolic health. So this explains why rehit although it's lower volume, can really pr- produce similar benefits to longer duration exercise protocols. Rehit is what to use if you hate traditional hit or sit and you find yourself not doing it at all because you just dread it. The sessions are super short. Really, you only need like 40 true seconds of work. So 20 seconds of your super maximal effort, a break with like two to three minutes in between, repeat one more time, and you're done. 
There are also additional benefits of rehit other than the fact that they're a lot shorter. The paper suggests that rehit has a less of a decrease in effective valence or mood. So HIT protocols are often really taxing both mentally and physically, but rehit did not affect someone's mood much, if at all. This means that you're more likely to stay consistent with it, triggering better benefits. And this is because, again, since there's a light at the end of the tunnel, pretty much right when you start, it's you're less likely to have a decrease in mood. And again, it's just something that you're going to show up for more often. It just feels easier to achieve knowing that, okay, I only have to do like two sprints for 20 seconds with my all-out effort. Okay, I can do that. You also have minimal heat production with rehit. Since the sprints are short there's and there's only like two or three each session, you won't see a strong sweat response. So you might not sweat at all. So this means you could easily incorporate it into your day without even having to shower afterwards. Another benefit that the paper also highlighted is that there's less risk of overtraining. And this is simply because there's less repetitions through your joint and through your body. So it's easier to recover from. I think the fact that it's easier to recover from is something that's not talked about enough in the industry. There's all these recommendations to like do more, more, more. We need to do hypertrophy training. We need to do zone two. We need to do hit. But there's not an emphasis on number one, what's realistic to add into your routine. And then number two, what you can actually recover from or feel good from. Because what's the point of adding all of this exercise if you feel broken down, you hate doing it, you have to like hype yourself up to do it at all. So We know that doing too much is really not going to feel good on your body. It's not going to be very sustainable. If your dosage is too high, you're going to start accumulating negative side effects and feel like crap. But if we can get the desired effect from this high-intensity work by putting less stress through your joints, we need to do that. So if you aren't doing hit or sit because you hate it or because it hurts your body or because you 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 don't have time or whatever it might be, re-hit is an excellent alternative. So here's a protocol that you could implement. Start with a two to three minute warm up, warm up your body, whatever that looks like, and then do your first sprint for 20 to 30 seconds. You could sprint on a bike, you could sprint on a treadmill, an elliptical, you could do jump squats. It doesn't have to be a traditional running sprint, although it can be. Just anything that you are using all out effort for, 20 to 30 seconds, as hard as you possibly can. (laughs) You just think about like if you could go longer than 30 seconds, you're probably not going hard enough. And then you'll rest for two to three minutes and then you'll repeat again one or two more times and then you'll cool down for like two to three minutes. So at a minimum, that's 40 seconds of work per week. If you can do that twice per week, that's great. That results in less than two minutes of work per week to have substantial benefits to your metabolic health and your cardiovascular health. The paper that I am pulling this information from used a protocol where the participants did two sit interval train or two rehit uh, sessions per week, and I think they did two or three sprints per session. And they saw that after six weeks, they had an improvement in VO2 max by ten percent, and that is a huge improvement in just six weeks. So let's go over some questions that you may have in regards to implementing this. Question number one: If I'm an Evla member, how can I implement this? So. Our cardio burst class on Wednesday tends to fall into more of the HIT style workout, which is great, but we're going to be adding a handful of re-HIT style classes that I'll be teaching that are shorter in duration that you can find under programs. So these classes could be classes that you could tack on to the end of a workout, like one or two times per week. I would recommend doing it after your strength workout instead of before your strength workout. Um, experiment with it. You could try adding it after burn. You could try adding it after Friday's full body class. Uh, You could try doing it on Thursday instead of your Thursday, either bar or build plus. So there's lots of different ways to experiment and play with it. If you're adding this for the first time and you're not used to doing any type of high intensity training, like if you're not taking cardio bursts, what I would recommend doing is trying your re-hit session right after Friday's full body class because you might have a little soreness since you're using muscles probably in a different way than you're used to. And that way you have your two recovery days over the weekend to recover before you work out again on Monday. So try that, add it to the end of Friday's class and see how that feels. And then you can kind of dose it from there. If you want to just do it once a week, that's great. If you want to add it in twice a week after classes, that's great. 
I also recommend if you're going to do this rehit style class is to actually finish the entire class. So sometimes we'll say you can stop before we cool down and go right into the cardio class. For rehit, I would actually recommend taking the full cool down of the class so that way you feel really recovered before you go into this rehit session so that you can really hit your max intensities. So again, play with it. There's no right or wrong. Try adding it after different classes and just see how you feel. Experiment with like, okay, if I take it after burn, I feel like I can really put in that full effort. Um, I can really get to my ma- super max intensities. If you don't like the rehit class and you're an EVLA member, you could always implement this on a bike, an elliptical. You could do sprints. You could do hill sprints, uh, stair climber, whatever you want, as long as you feel like you can hit that max intensity. So question number two is, does this mean that you have to switch to rehit if you're already doing hit? Not necessarily. Like I said, I do recommend if you're going to choose one, I would recommend doing sprint interval training over that kind of 80% of your uh, maximum that you would typically get in a hit session or in cardio burst. But You don't necessarily have to change if you don't want to. If you're like, I'm only going to do one and I prefer cardio burst, then just take that instead. Again, it's important that you're doing what you can sustain. But of course, if you're feeling broken down because you're doing HIIT or because you're taking boot camp classes that have a lot of HIIT in them, yes, I would recommend switching. And I would recommend focusing on hypertrophy or muscle growth, focusing on easy zone two cardio, like 150 minutes per week, and then adding in one or two of these re-HIIT style workouts. But it doesn't mean that you have to taper down and do re-HIIT if you already have sit in your routine or if you already have HIIT in your routine and it's working for you and feeling really good. And then question number three, if I can only do one session, is that enough? So the research focused on more than one session per week in their study design, but according to their theory that even one sprint can activate all of these hormonal cascades that have a large effect on your body, in theory, you could just do one sprint, one 20 to 30 second sprint, as long as it's your super maximal effort and potentially see these incredible benefits. So You may not have to do them more than once a week to see, you know, substantial increases in your VO2 max and your metabolic health. I probably personally will not be doing a rehit session more than one time per week. I'm also prioritizing other things like hypertrophy and low intensity cardio, like walking or taking low impact cardio bursts. So just from like a time investment standpoint and just the fact that I hate doing (laughs) that type of training, I'm probably only going to do it one time per week, maybe two sprints and then be done with it. So again, it's not an all or nothing. If you're like, if it's between doing something and doing nothing, just do one 20 second sprint each week. And I feel like number one, you're going to get better at it. You're probably going to want to do it a little bit more often. And number two, you can really start to see substantial benefits just from doing it once a week. All right. I hope this was helpful and exciting for those of you that hate hit or, or sprint interval training. We will see you all next week. Same time, same place. Bye for now.